How to mix vocals. Well, the first thing I gotta say is when it comes to mixing vocals, you're gonna have more fun mixing vocals if you had fun recording vocals. This big purple thing is called a reflection filter. It's from a company called Aston, and it sits on top of the microphone stand so that the microphone has a more direct sound coming into it rather than the sounds of your room, which may have good or bad acoustics in it. It really makes the process of recording vocals enjoyable and fun. And if the process of recording vocals is enjoyable and fun, then I'll tell you that mixing vocals will also be enjoyable and fun. So let's talk about vocals. The number one factor when it comes to having a good vocal mix is the singer themselves. If Adele or Chris Stapleton walked into your home studio right now and wanted to record a vocal, do you think it would sound good? It would sound good because the talent and the ability of the singer. And when it comes to mixing, I doubt you would want to do much, if anything, to their mix. Other times, if you're dealing with a vocal track that's very pitchy, that's not in time, your mix is gonna look very different than other people's mix. You're probably gonna have to use a lot of auto-tune, a lot of Melodyne, you're gonna have to do a lot of time correcting, and that can be kind of frustrating. But the second thing is what our singers are singing into, which is the microphone. I highly recommend that if you're starting out, make sure you have a large diaphragm condenser microphone. These microphones seem to have a lot more air or presence in the vocal. They're gonna make EQing a lot easier than if you're using a dynamic microphone like a Shure SM57 or even the SM7B. Earlier, I mentioned the halo reflection filter. This has to do with the distance between the vocalist and the singer. And you may think that six inches or less isn't a big factor at all, but if the room you're in isn't acoustically treated, you're gonna have a lot of problems. It's gonna sound like a small room. It's gonna sound like it's got echoes and reflections. So you might wanna look into getting some sort of reflection filter. This can be a dramatic effect on the recording of your vocals. Your vocals will sound cleaner and you'll have less echoing like I was talking about coming from your room. Next after the microphone is the mic preamp or the microphone preamp. Microphone preamps can come in all different sizes and they can definitely get really, really, really expensive. If you have a microphone preamp built into your audio interface, you're probably good to go. You can look at upgrading those things much later. Next after the microphone preamp is the audio interface. I listed this as three slash four because a lot of you out there are using audio interfaces that have preamps built into them, okay? So order of importance, we have the singer, we have the microphone, and then we have basically what's gonna take that microphone signal and turn it into a digital signal that our computer can talk to. Interfaces are a lot more affordable these days, especially rather than spending money on a microphone preamp, you might wanna get a really nice audio interface that has preamps already built into it. After the audio interface is the Digital Audio Workstation, DAW. Today's video, I'm using PreSonus Studio One. The DAW is where you're gonna be doing all of your mixing. This is where you can add plugins like EQ, compression, and reverb, which we'll get to in just a minute. If you're in a home studio environment, I've labeled these out in order of importance that I believe. The number one is the vocal, the person who's singing. Number two, the microphone that you're using to record the vocal. Then you get into your audio interface or your microphone preamp, and then whatever sort of digital audio workstation you're using. Other factors include the acoustics, like the room that you're in, if all of these things are working happily together, you'll be surprised at how little mixing you're actually having to do. Now, why in this video about mixing vocals are we talking so much about these things? It's because this is all part of the process. If you skip out on room acoustics or the microphone or the ability of the singer to sing, your mixing process is gonna be really frustrating and you're gonna spend more time getting rid of errors than actually enjoying the process and just taking a vocal from good to great. So here on the screen, I've got a song called Nothing Less. All the instruments, all the vocal stuff was recorded here in this room. Lana recorded using the reflection filter that's behind me. With the microphone is the Neumann TLM-103. It's a large diaphragm condenser mic. It's got a pop filter in front of it as well. We recorded it straight into my RME interface, so we don't have any external preamps at all. If I bypass all of the plugins, here's what it sounds like. Sounds, my soul will be in him be found. My 
The first thing in mixing a vocal is you need to know how loud the vocal actually is. This can come down to just setting the gain on your preamp when you're recording, but just in case you recorded things too loud or too quiet, what I want to aim for is negative 18. It can be anywhere between that negative 12 and negative 24. Negative 18 would be great though. When on that day his trumpet sounds, my soul will then in him be found. If the vocal isn't loud enough, you can add what's called the Mix Tool plugin, or you can just use Clip Gain. Clip Gain is available on any of the tracks. Just go to the top, click and drag up, it'll make it louder. Click and drag down, it'll make it quieter. For this vocal, we're just about where we need to be. Anywhere between negative 12 to negative 24 is gonna be fine, but we need to lean closer to negative 18 if possible. The next plugin I like to use after I've metered the plugin to make sure it's at negative 18 is an EQ plugin. PreSonus has one called Pro EQ. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm cutting the mud and I'm boosting the air. The air is typically going to be in the higher frequencies and the treble stuff. Mud is usually going to be low end and low mids. Let's take a listen so you can hear the difference. Here's with no EQ. When on that day his trumpet sounds. And here it is with EQ. When on that day his trumpet sounds, my soul will then in him be found. So here's an example of the exact moves I'm making on the EQ. Using a low cut filter, I can cut out all the rumble, the stuff that a human voice isn't even producing to begin with. 150 hertz is pretty high for a low cut filter, but again, this is a female vocal. You can always go a little bit higher with a female voice than a male vocal. If you've got a deep country voice, you may wanna lower the low cut filter down to something more like 100 hertz or 110 hertz. This is gonna be room, 110 hertz is really where we've got bass guitar, we've got a lot of the heaviness on the drums, we're saving that for that stuff. I'm gonna set a loop with the vocal, I'm gonna boost these frequencies so that you can really hear what I'm looking for when I'm making cut. When on that day, his trumpet sounds, my soul You can hear that honkiness, this is the low mid. Be found. My joy will, when on that day, his trumpet sounds. You can hear it again My there. It's a little bit more broad. In him be found. My joy will when on that day. This is a really nasally kind of honk sound. sound. This is the mid range. My soul will then in him be found. Again, that's right My up at 826 hertz. The other ones were 388 and 250. So anywhere from 250 to 500. This is gonna be called the mud region. This is where we get a lot of the boxiness and honkiness. And this can also just come from the distance that you are away from your microphone when you're recording. If you're really close to the microphone, if your mouth is right up on it, you're gonna have more issues with the proximity effect. You're gonna have a lot more low rumble. You're gonna have a lot more mud that you just need to cut out a little bit. I'm not cutting much. At most, I'm hitting negative six decibels. Some of these moves are only taking out three decibels in the mud. Then the high frequencies on a female vocal, you need to go pretty high. We're up at 12K. I'll boost a little bit of that. It's just giving us a lot of the air, giving us some natural ambience to the sound. When on that day, his trumpet sounds, my soul will then. And I'm not afraid to make these kind of EQ moves in solo. That means without listening to the rest of the instruments, these are moves that I would make regardless, just because the mud is always gonna be there and I wanna have a nice bright vocal. In 2024, a lot of our vocals are gonna sound polished, they're gonna sound a lot brighter than normal. So with just the level meter and the EQ plugin, let's take a listen to a before and after. I'll hit spacebar, plugins are disabled, and I'll go through and enable each of them. Now we're gonna add a compressor. On the compressor plugin, I'm looking to do about six decibels of gain reduction. Why six decibels? I don't think six decibels is egregious. It will be noticeable. Anything above three decibels, most people are gonna be able to hear it in their ears. But a compressor is essentially taking the loud parts of the track and making them quieter and it's bringing up some of the quieter portions. If you'll notice on this song, there are a few words and things that kind of get hidden because she gets a lot quieter. 
and then she gets louder. I just want to compress that. I want to take a track from being this dynamic and I want it to be this dynamic. So about six decibels of gain reduction. On the attack, I've got the attack time set to one millisecond. The attack time is going to be the initial hit of the S's, T's, the beginnings of the words. If your attack time isn't fast enough, those things are going to get through and it's going to sound quite distorted. The release time is set to 10 milliseconds, which is kind of medium. And we've got the threshold pulled down so that a 2.5 ratio should be getting us about six decibels of compression. Let's take a listen. When you're using this kind of compressor, make sure you've got the makeup gain accounted for. So if you're compressing a vocal or compressing an instrument, it's by nature gonna sound a little bit quieter. But the makeup gain is where we can bring the overall volume of the track back up again. So let me bypass the compressor and then I'll turn it on. Just as an added, if you want to put a de-esser plugin, usually after doing compression, some S's and T's can get a little bit out of hand and stuff can sound a little bit harsh. I'm just adding this de-esser almost as a safety so that at any part during the song, if there's an S or a T, something that really just explodes out at you, this is going to catch it. I've got her de-esser set to 5.4 kilohertz. I've got the reduction around negative 28 narrow and gentle. I don't want to do anything too extreme with this de -esser. Again, it's just kind of as a safety. So let's take a listen to all the plugins. We've got one more thing I want to do to this before we finish. Let's just take a listen to what it sounds like now that we've mixed it. Here it is again with no plugins. Now, the last thing you want to do is add some reverb and effects. I tend to go very minimal when it comes to reverb, delay, and kind of unnatural sounding effects. But what I've done is I've set up an effects bus. You can right click any of the tracks on the mix tab, click add effects channel. I've renamed this one LV Reverb, Lana Vocal Reverb. And on the reverb track, I don't want a lot of the mud coming into my reverb. So I've added this EQ plugin, cutting out everything below about 200 Hertz. And then what's called a room reverb. On room reverb, they have a preset called flat plate. A plate reverb is essentially gonna give you some ambience without doing a lot of modulation at all. So some reverbs, they'll take your vocal and they'll kind of like change the pitch to it. They'll have a bunch of echoing. Plate reverb is just kind of a nice, smooth decay coming out. The settings of my plate reverb, in case you want to copy, is at 6.8 seconds. I've got the mix at 1, pre-delay at negative 150, room size 4.8, width at 0.1, height at 1. And then on the Lana reverb channel, I click this plus button for sends, go to audio destination, and then make sure you have your reverb selected. And I've turned down the fader to negative 20. So I don't want a lot of this reverb coming out. Let's enable the reverb and take a listen in solo. In Christ alone, I place my trust, the sweetest frames. If I turn it off. Alone, I place my trust, the sweetest frames. Now let's listen to it in context of the rest of the mix. I hope one of your takeaways from today's video was actually just how simple the mixing process was. And that's only because we prioritize the things leading up to the mix. Make sure you get it right at the source and you'll have a fun time recording vocals. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.